Well, good evening. Uh, I started doing some, uh, uh, just started working on my uh, 5200A uh, program calibrator, where I was AC calibrator, where I was going to to start dialing it in. Um, but the, you know, the the 8672A was sort of on the back of my mind, and I know I'd said I'd, I'd wait until I got the extenders, but I decided to take a look at the. Um, the schematic again and uh, I went through and said okay what are the parts in here that could be causing me problems that I don't actually have a replacement for uh, here you know in the in the workshop and so those parts were Q5 here Q6 these are both uh, uh, HP uh, uh, part numbered uh, transistors uh, I originally think they're made by Motorola but they're basically uh, sort of unobtainium uh, now uh, I thought U3 uh, that uh, is a little uh, can uh, it turns out that U3 is actually just an LM301 and so uh, in my particular case if you look at the the board it's actually a um, integrated circuit instead of uh, one of these uh, TO35, I think, TO32, uh, the eight pin packages that have to look up the number, it sort of escapes me. Um, so I thought, well, that could be a problem. Uh, then the two Zener diodes, there's uh, a little 11 volt diode here, which is VR1, uh, and it's designed to uh, uh, make sure that you get uh, uh, a certain feed on the, uh, the amplifier here. And then there's another one in the over voltage protection circuit. Uh, which is 44 point, which is VR3, it's a 44.2, it's a very unusual sort of value. Um, this is basically uh, just like a little crowbar circuit, and so what happens is eventually the SCR here, turns, when the voltage gets above 44.2 volts, as defined by the Zener, um, the SCR here turns on and it causes a dead short to ground, which then will blow, that dead short to ground will blow uh, the fuse F2 uh, over here and so let me lift that up a little bit uh, let me zoom out so you can see actually sort of the the circuit a little bit better um, when you get this dead short across here to ground and then that causes uh, uh, F2 to blow and that basically saves or protects the rest of the the circuit here so all the rest of the capacitors and resistors and so I had those um, uh, available and so I was thinking well, I, I wonder really while I'm waiting for the extender you know I can plug the board in and and take a look um, what I can also do is actually go in and check some of the uh, check some of the uh, uh, transistors and so the first thing I did was I, I checked uh, uh, A3Q2 uh, which is uh, the big power uh, you know which is the series pass transistor uh, for the 40 volt line um, and I was originally checking it and I was like, oh, you know, it, it seemed to be a bit dodgy and, and everything. And then uh, eventually, you know, I, I realized that what was happening is because I had, uh, uh, because I still had uh, uh, A3, A4 plugged in, what I was actually effectively doing was using my uh, multimeter to charge um, the capacitor up in the main uh, power supply. And that was what was giving me the problem. So by taking out... Uh, A3, A4, then I could actually go and check the transistor and do a very crude check on it by just making sure what is it actually a pair of diodes that have a diode drop in the appropriate direction and uh, I went and did that and it, it seemed to be fine so I thought okay great you know that and that was pretty good because to get to that I'd have to actually take the the whole uh, system part so then I thought well let's grab uh, the board here and start giving it a, a try and so Starting over here, this is uh, Q5 here, and you can see, oh, starting over here, uh, let me, this is fascinating, uh, television here, fascinating video, let's get that in there. Alright, so this is Q5, so this is this guy here, and you can see this is a, a can, and this is big enough for me to get in and get in under that, and so I was able to put my, if you see the, so I was able to put my, um, uh, transistor checker on that and check it out and uh, it, it 
registers a transistor. Now it has an HFE of 7, which seems a bit strange, but you know, it rep it came back as a proper transistor. Uh, so you know, I can only assume in the without going and finding a, a replacement part and trying it that uh, that that's a reasonable value for it. Um, and then I moved on to Q6, and I thought, well, you know, I can test Q6. Uh, I can't really test uh, the LM301 uh, until I get the you know replacement um, uh, until I get the extender boards. And I had uh, actually already gone and uh, checked. The, whether these Zener diodes actually acted as diodes or if they'd gone open circuit. And so I checked a bunch of the diodes and they all seem to work as actual diodes. So um, overall, uh, you know, the only part that I couldn't really check was the LM301. So I started, and this is a TO92 package, and so I started getting in and uh, trying to get in around it. And I eventually got uh, my little mini grabbers onto the package and I was able to, to test it and uh, sure enough it showed uh, that it had a, a problem so what I did is I took it out of uh, let's zoom this out a little bit I took this out of circuit and uh, that way I could actually get right in there and guarantee that there's no uh, extraneous systems now this is a cheap little $15 uh, transistor checker from uh, eBay uh, and it seems to do a reasonable job. I actually have been thinking about uh, dumping this and getting a proper uh, Peak Atlas or Atlas Peak uh, a unit that is all built up. Uh, but it's an order of magnitude more expensive. So for right now, this is just what I'm using. And when I hit that, what you'll notice is that it comes back and it thinks that this is actually two resistors. So I'm pretty certain that what's gone on is Q6 here has uh, has failed and if you look at where Q6 is in the circuit you'll notice that Q6 is here in the current limiter let me zoom in a bit let me zoom in a bit so you'll see that Q6 is in the current limiter here and so what I'm hypothesizing has happened is that Q6 is so it's something's gone on that's caused uh, the crowbar circuit, the fire that has blown the transistor, that uh, blown the, the fuse. Q6 has died. Now, Q6 could have died and caused the problem, but I don't think so. Um, you know, Q6 will have, come, have died, and so uh, what it's doing here is it's now act, turning on the current limiter, and so effectively. Uh, what is going on is that's causing the voltage to drop uh, on the outputs as it limits the current that can be drawn which is causing the, the problem so what I'm going to go do uh, tomorrow is just go get uh, a little replacement uh, uh, um, uh, transistor here now it doesn't seem to be a terribly special transistor um, the characteristics they listed was power dissipation uh, and uh, voltage uh, and I can get a uh, 2N, uh, I think it is I think it's a 2N2484 um, yeah, oh, it's, yeah, 2N2484 um, which has uh, very similar characteristics in fact, the local distributor has uh, the NTE version which is NT123A so for testing purposes, I think what I'll do on my way home from work tomorrow is go pick up uh, one of those uh, NT123As and uh, just whack it in the board and we'll see you know, whether or not putting it into the board here and I'm going to get a, a, an actual proper 1.5 amp fuse but we'll see if we can put it into the board here and if that brings our uh, 40 volt rail back and if it does then we'll be able to move on to uh, uh, seeing if the other uh, parts of the, the the system work and we'll do a more comprehensive test around um, you know, we'll do a more comprehensive test around whether or not uh, uh, there's a problem with that attenuator that we saw in that first video so dead transistor hopefully uh, that 
also won't mean the LM301 uh, is uh, dead, but I can uh, replace that because I think I have uh, a bunch of LM301s here. Alright, hope you found that interesting. Part 2 of the repair. I'll be back with Part 3 fairly shortly. Get to it.